Hey guys, it's Ashley Fultz from thestyleeditrix.com. Today I'm talking all about baby, and that's specifically how to get your baby to sleep through the night. Um, a lot of women talk to me about, you know, my baby doesn't sleep, everything else, and I believe there's specific tips and tricks on how to do it. I got Smith to sleep through the night around seven or eight weeks, and it's been a godsend. That was my biggest concern when I was pregnant, so I thought I would share some of those with you today. So no, I don't believe it's like about luck or you just have an awesome baby. I feel like sleeping is something that you set up. It's a pattern and it's definitely dependent on a schedule. When I first had Smith, I was very scheduled and I thought about um, feeding the baby during the day more often than at night. And you really wanna do this in the beginning. Um, feed as often as you can during the day. The saying, don't wake a sleeping baby is not true. Well, maybe during the night, but not during the day for sure. Um, my tip is to feed your baby every two hours. Obviously in the beginning you're feeding on demand, but um, you know, make sure that even if they're sleeping for three hours, wake them. It's hard to do, especially when you wanna sleep, but my tip is to wake them and to feed the baby every two hours so that way they're getting tons of milk during the day. My other tip is to really make the days and nights different. So days, you wanna wake up and have all the windows open and light coming in and maybe turn the TV on or music on and sing and, and you know read and play and you're doing all these fun things during the day. But then at nighttime and around, I would say six o'clock, turn the lights low, turn all the noise down and make it a very quiet, boring sort of situation. So your baby doesn't wanna stay up all night long and they are nocturnal um, in the beginning. So you really have to teach them day from night and nighttime is for sleeping. And the other thing is if you're doing nighttime feedings, make sure that it's really quiet. There's no talking, there's no fun, there's no anything involved. You feed them, birth them, change them if you're going to, and then put them back to sleep and you go back to sleep yourself. So I'm not a big proponent of like watching TV while you're doing the feedings or anything else. No, not to mention you need to get as much sleep as possible in the beginning um, when they're waking up every two hours. So definitely keep it quiet and calm in the night. So while I'm not a sleeping expert, um, I definitely read a lot of books before I had the baby and that's how I have this information. I'll share those books with you below. Cherish the first six weeks and Baby Wise were super helpful to me in understanding why the baby wouldn't be sleeping through the night and what you're doing to help or hurt the situation. So anyways, another thing that I really believe in is the dream feed. Um, this is a feed that happens around 10, 10, 30, 11, just depending on what you wanna do and when you actually go to sleep or when your partner goes to sleep. But the dream feed is the last feed of the night before you put your baby down. So you'll get to a point, I think it's like two or three weeks in, and your doctor will say, if your baby is sleeping stretches during the night, you don't have to wake them. Whereas in the beginning when they're trying to gain back their weight or whatever else, um, or until they get to like 12 pounds, or I, I can't remember exactly, but um, they'll say wake the baby every couple hours, make sure they're getting enough feedings in. Um, but then once you get to that point where you can let them sleep, the dream feed is the key to making them sleep longer. So say 7 p.m. is your last feeding, which mine is. Then I put the baby to bed and Smith would sleep, you know, probably if I let him until two o'clock. But what we did is a dream feed around 10 or 10.30 and we got him up. We did not really wake him. It was as light of movement as possible. It was dark and quiet in his room. We gave him a bottle. So the idea behind it is you're getting a longer stretch between seven and maybe four or two or whatever it is versus them waking you up at 12 right after you just went to sleep. So that 10 p.m. feed is a great feed um, before someone goes to bed or it's earlier on so that you can have a longer stretch during the middle of the night, which is super important to those deep sleep patterns, which you really need to not lose your mind, which I was doing in the beginning. Um, so the dream feed is super, super important until you get to a certain age and then you can drop the dream feed. Cherish the first six weeks actually lines it all up and I think around uh, seven weeks maybe we dropped the dream feed. Um, we just did smaller ounces each time for a week. Um, so we were at maybe, you know, six ounces and we would drop it to five, four, three, two, you know, and eventually just knocked it out. We didn't even do the one ounce. It was just gone and he was fine and he ended up sleeping. So you don't do that until they're sleeping for long periods of time. But in the beginning I got him to sleep, I think 
after the, it was, you know, 7 p.m. or 7.30, and then he would sleep after the dream feed until maybe 2.30, and then it would stretch longer, and it was to 4, and then it was to 5, and then it was to 6, and then now he sleeps 12 hours a night. So he sleeps 7.30 to around 7 a.m. Um, or 7.30 a.m. in the morning. So it's amazing, and it makes me a sane mama, and this has been happening since seven weeks. So super important. Another um, thing I wanna mention is swaddling. Um, my doctor was a big proponent of this, and. Also, the books were as well, uh, but it really makes your baby sleep more soundly and feel more secure. Um, so even if you feel like your baby's fighting to get out of the swaddle, find a good swaddle like one with Velcros or one with snaps or something that stays really tight and keeps them in because I feel like that makes them sleep longer stretches at a time. And a passy is another thing. Once we got Smith out of our room, which was really scary, it happened around six or seven weeks, my um, night nurse said, you know what, I think you're waking him up at night. Move him into his own room, but I was afraid for him to be alone. So that's really when I incorporated the passy every night for him to sleep with. Um, because it's supposed to deter from them getting SIDS or, um, and it's just supposed to help them sleep longer. And eventually he spits it out during the night, but going to sleep, it really soothes him and calms him and he still does that to this day. Um, yeah, so those are two huge things. And we also have music. It's the same music that we play every single night. Um, and I feel like that really relaxes them and makes them feel not so alone. You could do like a fan in the room. Um, you can also do one of those little, um, noise machines. Another key piece of advice that bringing up baby a book I read and also cherish the first six weeks is don't just run to your baby every single time you hear a noise during the middle of the night. Um, babies actually go through a lot of different sleep cycles and wake themselves up a bit and just let them kind of self-soothe for a minute. I'm not saying cry it out. I never did cry it out. I never had to do sleep training because we did the schedule earlier on. Um, but it's also not just running to your baby and freaking out every single time you hear a noise. Kind of let them figure it out, see if they're gonna go right back to sleep. You don't wanna wake them if they're not really awake. And that was a key thing um, when we had Smith move into his crib. I was a little afraid to, um, you know, just let him be. But I usually would give it like a minute or two and see if he was actually crying. I'd look on the monitor. A monitor is a great, great way to, you know, really make sure your baby's okay and I could see him breathing and I could see him moving or, you know, whatever he was doing. And I could hear him if he was crying or fussing or just talking or if he was asleep or awake. Um, so that's a great way to tell without just rushing to your baby's side every single minute. Anyways, I hope these tips helped you guys. Definitely message me, leave me a comment if you have any questions or you have any tips to share with other mamas. I feel like we all have to help each other in getting to this point because sleep is something that we all need. And I know this was the scariest time for me when I wasn't getting sleep. So the sooner you can sleep through the night, the better. And now I am just so excited to be sleeping 12 hours a night because I can have dinner with my husband, I can work a little bit, and I can get eight hours of sleep. It's a godsend and he's the cutest baby ever. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what else you wanna know about baby, if I can share any other advice or must-haves, you name it, whatever it is, I will do it for you guys. I'll see you guys soon.